The Barber's Revenge Squad Once upon a time in the bustling city of Crestwood, a group of individuals found solace in their shared experiences of being wronged by society. The pain of witnessing abuse of power, specifically by girls and women who misused their authority, became a burning desire for justice within their hearts. These individuals were barbers, skilled in the art of grooming and with a strong sense of fairness. Inspired by their mutual plight, they formed a clandestine vigilante organization known as the Barber's Revenge Squad. The squad comprised of five exceptional barbers, Marcus, the charismatic leader with a razor-sharp wit, Amelia, a fierce and daring young woman who excelled in intricate hairstyles, Samuel, a seasoned veteran known for his meticulous attention to detail, Isabella, an expert in hair coloring and styling, and Jackson, a master of disguise, capable of transforming into anyone he pleased. In the dark corners of the city, the Barber's Revenge Squad devised a plan to bring justice to those who had abused their power. Their method was unconventional but effective. They would forcibly give haircuts to the offenders, symbolically stripping them of the external manifestation of their dominance. With each snip of their scissors, they aimed to restore balance and teach a valuable lesson. Their first target was Principal Victoria, a woman who had exploited her position of authority to harass students and manipulate the school system for personal gain. With careful planning, the squad infiltrated the school unnoticed, posing as maintenance workers. Disguised as janitors, they seized the opportunity during a surprise staff meeting to corner Principal Victoria. The Barber's Revenge Squad entered Principal Victoria's office cautiously, their hearts pounding with determination. The room was filled with an air of anticipation as they confronted the woman who had abused her power. Marcus, the charismatic leader, took a step forward, locking eyes with Victoria. His voice resonated with unwavering conviction as he addressed her. Victoria, the time has come for you to face the consequences of your despicable actions and misuse of authority. Victoria's face contorted with a mix of surprise, fear, and defiance. She attempted to gather herself, but Isabella, known for her no-nonsense demeanor, interrupted with a stern tone. Your days of exploiting others are over, Victoria. It's time for you to learn the true meaning of justice. Samuel, with his steady hands and unwavering resolve, moved closer, holding a pair of barber shears. He spoke with a quiet intensity. We have seen the pain you've caused, the lives you've shattered. Now it's time to make amends, starting with a symbolic act. As the tension in the room escalated, Jackson, the master of disguise, stepped forward, transforming into a mirror image of Victoria. The eerie resemblance sent chills down her spine, as if facing her own reflection in the face of accountability. Amelia, the fearless hair artist, approached Victoria and securely bound her to the chair, ensuring she couldn't escape. Victoria's eyes widened with a mix of fear and anger as she realized the magnitude of the situation. With a swift motion, Amelia took a strip of cloth and gently placed it over Victoria's mouth, silencing her. It was a symbolic act, signifying the silence she had imposed on her victims and the need for her to face the consequences of her actions. Marcus stepped forward once again, holding up a pair of golden scissors. These scissors had been passed down through generations of barbers in the squad and were said to carry a unique power. As Marcus prepared to begin the haircut, he spoke with a firm but compassionate voice. Victoria, your actions have caused immeasurable pain to those under your authority. Today, we aim to restore the balance and show you the error of your ways. The sound of the scissors slicing through the air was deafening in the otherwise silent room. One by one, the other barbers joined in, each taking a turn to cut a portion of Victoria's hair. With each snip, a weight seemed to lift from their shoulders, as if justice was being served one strand at a time. As the final lock of hair fell to the ground, the barber's revenge squad stepped back to admire their work. Victoria's once immaculate hair was now a symbol of her downfall, 
a testament to the power of accountability and the consequences of abusing authority. Victoria's eyes welled up with tears and her expression softened. The act of having her hair forcibly cut seemed to have a profound impact on her, forcing her to confront the pain she had inflicted on others. The silence that had once been imposed on her victims now weighed heavily on her, and the lesson was not lost on her. The squad removed the cloth from Victoria's mouth, allowing her to speak. With a quivering voice, she whispered, I understand now. What I did was wrong, and I am truly sorry for the pain I've caused. Amelia, still standing close to Victoria, looked into her eyes and replied, Apologies are a good start, but actions speak louder than words. Use this experience to change your ways and seek redemption. Only then can true healing begin. As the Barber's Revenge Squad left Principal Victoria's office, they knew their mission was not just about meeting out punishment, but also about giving people the opportunity to learn and grow from their mistakes. They hoped that Victoria would choose the path of redemption, and they vowed to continue their work, seeking out those who abused power and holding them accountable. The news of the Barber's Revenge Squad's actions spread throughout Crestwood like wildfire. Some praised their unconventional methods, while others criticized them for taking justice into their own hands. But one thing was clear. Their actions sparked conversations about the abuse of power and the need for accountability. In the days that followed, Principal Victoria began making amends, reaching out to those she had wronged and offering genuine apologies. She took steps to address the issues within the school, implementing new policies to prevent similar abuses of power in the future. The Barber's Revenge Squad remained vigilant, continuing their work in the shadows, seeking out those who needed a wake-up call, and reminding everyone that justice should not be taken for granted. One day, the squad received a tip that a new principal had been hired at a nearby school. The new principal, a woman named Miss Smith, had a reputation for being ruthless and demanding. She had already been accused of bullying teachers and students, and the squad feared that she would continue to abuse her power. The squad decided to investigate Miss Smith, and they soon discovered that the rumors were true. Miss Smith was a tyrant, and she was making the lives of everyone at the school miserable. The squad knew that they had to do something, but they also knew that they had to be careful. Miss Smith was a powerful woman, and she would not hesitate to retaliate if she found out that they were investigating her. The squad decided to approach Miss Smith directly. They disguised themselves as parents of students at the school, and they met with Miss Smith to express their concerns. Miss Smith was initially dismissive of their concerns, but the squad was persistent. They told her about the rumors they had heard, and they urged her to change her ways. Miss Smith was initially dismissive of the squad's concerns, but she eventually realized that they were serious. She agreed to change her ways, and she promised to be a better principal. The Barber's Revenge Squad decided to take matters into their own hands. They tied her to a chair and began to shave her head with a razor. Miss Smith screamed and cried, but the squad was relentless. They shaved her head until she was completely bald. As they were shaving her head, they told her that this was a punishment for her abuse of power. They told her that she had made the lives of many people miserable and that she needed to be held accountable. Miss Smith was horrified and humiliated. She begged them to stop, but they refused. They shaved her head until it was completely bald. When they were finished, they left Miss Smith tied to the chair, crying and begging for mercy. The squad knew that this would be a wake-up call for Miss Smith. They hoped that she would learn from her mistake and never abuse her power again. The next day, Miss Smith was released from the chair. She was completely bald and she was still in shock from what had happened. She went to the police, but they refused to press charges against the Barber's Revenge Squad. Miss Smith was forced to resign from her position as principal. She was also forced to apologize to the students and teachers at the school. She promised to never abuse her power again. The men searched for other women to punish them. They found another woman, a young woman named Mary. 
Mary was walking home from the market when she was stopped by the men. They told her that she was a witch and that they were going to punish her. Mary was scared. As Mary stood there facing the menacing group of men, her heart pounded in her chest. She knew the rumors that had been spreading around Crestwood about the Barber's Revenge Squad and their vigilante acts of justice. She had heard about their brutal punishment of Principal Victoria, and she feared that she might suffer the same fate. Summoning all her courage, Mary spoke firmly. I am not a witch, and I have done nothing wrong. Please, you must believe me. One of the men, the burliest of the group, sneered at her. We've heard that one before. All witches deny their dark deeds. Mary's mind raced, trying to find a way to reason with them. I'm just a simple woman, going about my daily life. I have no powers or ill intentions. Please, you must listen. But the men seemed determined to carry out their twisted sense of justice. They grabbed Mary's arms and forced her into a nearby house. Inside, they tied her to a chair, leaving her no room to escape. Her heart sank as she realized the gravity of the situation. As the men prepared to shave her head, Mary pleaded with them one last time. You're making a terrible mistake. Please think about what you're doing. Mary's heart raced with fear as the man's menacing words echoed in her ears. She felt a wave of helplessness wash over her, but deep down, she knew she couldn't let them break her spirit. Summoning every ounce of courage she had left, she looked into his eyes and replied, I won't let you intimidate me. You have no right to do this to me. The man scoffed, finding her defiance amusing. Oh, we have every right. You're a witch, and you deserve to be punished for your dark deeds. Mary knew that reasoning with him might be futile, but she had to try. I assure you, I am not a witch. Those are baseless accusations, fueled by fear and ignorance. Another man chimed in. Save your lies for someone else. We've heard enough stories from witches like you. As the man approached Mary with the razor in hand, she closed her eyes for a moment, trying to find strength in the face of such injustice. She thought about her family, her friends, and all the good she had tried to do in her community. She couldn't bear the thought of them seeing her like this, stripped of her dignity and falsely branded. Please, I beg you to reconsider, Mary pleaded one last time. I have done nothing wrong. This act won't bring justice. It will only perpetuate cruelty. The man's grip tightened on the razor, his face contorted with anger. But just as he was about to shave Mary's hair, a voice from the doorway interrupted him. As Mary felt the cold metal of the razor against her scalp, tears streamed down her face uncontrollably. She cried out in anguish and despair as her hair fell in clumps onto the floor, leaving her head exposed and vulnerable. The men's actions were cruel and unjust, their belief in her supposed witchcraft blinding them to the truth. Mary's cries echoed through the room, but they seemed deaf to her pleas for mercy. Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well. I just wanted to take a moment to thank you for all your support of my channel. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to share my stories with you. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the story. What did you like about it? If you enjoyed the story, please share it with your friends and family. And if you could take a moment to like the clip and subscribe to my channel, I would be so grateful.